We are Digital Pacific, an online platform that makes visible and accessible Pacific items that are held in glam institutions around the world, including the Pacific. Pacific people have a shared history as navigators and orators. With great migration journeys, they have had to preserve culture and traditions over generations. This is what Digital Pacific hopes to achieve years into the future. Today, we share how we have supported people of the Pacific to preserve their knowledge and cultures and to be the authors of their own stories. Digital Pacific helps them to navigate the digital world to help preserve Pacific Miasino treasures. We have used the Uto, the seed of a coconut tree, to best describe Digital Pacific and its functions. There are six sections of Uto, and we have related these parts to the six different aspects that support the function of Digital Pacific. At the center of the Uto is the fruit, which represents the rich Pacific cultures and traditional knowledges available. The preservation, protection, and passing on of traditional knowledge is crucial for Pacific communities to survive and thrive. The next layer is the white flesh called katinga, located closest to the fruit. This is Pacific communities, holders of traditional knowledge and practices. They are the teachers, learners and practitioners of this knowledge. The inner husk is Digital Pacific. It is the part of a coconut that Pacific people use to make sinnet lashings to connect beams and houses and outriggers on rockers, canoes. We make visible and accessible Pacific Heritage collections that communities don't know exist, and we highly encourage reciprocity as a foundation for collaboration. Like the lashings, we create strong connections between Pacific communities who do not have access to their mersina and international glam sectors who hold these mersina. The outer shell is the hard shell of the coconut, called the ikuukari. It offers a layer of protection for communities and traditional knowledge. This is our Pacific Glam sector. They have strong connections to their communities as the gatherers of knowledge for future preservation. They know and understand traditional protocols to best engage with them. The outward facing part of the husk is the international glam sector. They hold the collections and resources of Pacific people but may not have access to traditional knowledge and connection to communities. These institutions have the resources to protect preserve and digitize Pacific treasures, but Pacific communities don't often know they exist. The shoot that grows from the Uto represents the growth of Pacific knowledge, information and practices through the use of Digital Pacific and its wider network. At the hands of learners, creators and storytellers, Pacific Messi and I have taken on a new life. Our user contribution feature provides a platform for Pacific knowledge to grow and for Pacific people to control the narratives of their stories. Our website has the power to reunite them with once lost cultural collections, empowering them to reconnect with their cultural identity. As the Tokoloa Imperial says, Toto hau tokina nei awana tupulanga e whaimai. Plant a seed today for our future generations. Thank you. Taputu, would you now like to, to have a, a, a to talk about your project? Yeah, sure. Well, um, happy Digital Preservation um, Day today. Um, and thank you again, Robin, for the invite to share our project and um, to be with you all today. Um, so my name is Taputu from the Cook Islands, and I'm the Program Manager for Digital Pacific. Uh, we're a very small team of two at the moment, so our my other colleague, Uluwa Pese, who does all the background behind our website to share some amazing collections, um, and he's our content analyst. So you kind of got a background of our model and how we work, so I'm just going to elaborate on a few things today and share what we do. And I'll just quickly share my screen. Please. Should we? Okay. So yeah, so you've got a bit of background about our little model. Um, and so I'm going to be sharing about Digital Pacific and how we're connecting with each of these groups with, through our project. So what we do. So we're fortunate to be funded by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Australia since 2020 when we launched the website. Um, and so this project is implemented by the National Library of New Zealand 
with the support of the National Library of Australia. And so uh, me and my colleague are based in Wellington at the National Library. So we've developed a website that makes uh, Pacific culture and heritage visible and accessible for people in and of the Pacific. And we share content from 32 Pacific Islands and I have over 910 uh, content partners that share their collections with us. So we have over 530,000 plus items available. And so over the past four years, we've been making connections with institutions that hold collections and partnering with them to share them on our website and also have connected with Pacific communities to these institutions that allow them to use spaces. So how do we uh, make this available, um, all these trees available for our Pacific people? And this is through our website. So collections are now available in just a few clicks and searches. Our website makes it easy for Pacific people to access their treasures, history and ancestors. We have developed our website so it's easy to navigate and it won't use up all your data. Because we know that data is really expensive in the Pacific. And so we also created this website for mobile first, so it best benefits the people in the Pacific. Um, and now we can connect isolated villages digitally to their culture and here it is if they have access to the internet. So the Digital Pacific team have hosted and collaborated with communities and our partners to share Pacific cultural heritage with the communities it belongs to. These include both in-person and online. Because we're based in New Zealand at the National Library, we have the opportunity to share some of their amazing Pacific collections with the community. But we also have to try and replicate this for those based in the Pacific so they can also have access. So this year we hosted a Samoan movie event, which was well attended by the Samoan community in Wellington, but also streamed this live online. So many Pacific communities don't know that these collections exist, so making access to these physical items is really important, but also connecting with curators that look after these items as well. Um, and as part, as part of the project, we have traveled to different parts of the Pacific, including the Cook Islands, Solomon Islands, Northern Marianas, Fiji, Samoa and Palau not only to share our digital collections, but understand many challenges the Pacific land sector face and see how Digital Pacific can potentially support or connect them with support. And so one of the best features I think about is of our website is our user contribution feature, which you just heard about. Um, and so this is kind of the best way that we can gauge how our users are interacting with our website. So at the moment we have 140 user contributions, so users don't need to set up an account. The only information we take from them is the email and they can choose whether their name is presented or not. So we don't do any moderation on the stories. Once they submit it, it goes live on our website and we have a wide range of stories and topics shared by our users. Um, and I will highlight one of them. Um, so this video is on is of the Nganga family farm in Fiji and they share songs and they often sing in their plantation. So this video is from Coconut TV and they have used YouTube as their platform to share their collections. And so a user contribution, um, I guess, has written the story in Bosovakaviti in the Fijian language, sharing the experience living in the village where it everyone helps each other with their crops. We also have a feature where if any contributions are offensive, um, others can report it. So we rely on our users to do this if the contributions are in a different language. But no one has reported a contribution yet. And some of you may have done a contribution a couple of weeks ago if you were at ARAN's uh, conference in Christchurch and some of you that came to our session, these are available on our website for you. So just to kind of sum up where we are going from now, um, like many projects, always trying to secure funding. Our funding currently ends in June 2025, but also trying to ensure that the right funding model um, that allows us to do and continue this important work. 
Um, this project was only supposed to be a pilot project and now is a transition project. So making decisions on where this project should be based in New Zealand or based in the Pacific. So we're still deciding on those decisions. Um, and what we've learned over the past four years is that there's a significant gap in the Pacific around digital preservation. We've been able to harvest from all over the world, but the Pacific. Um, and our website is supposed to be for the people of the Pacific. So there needs to be significant resources and training for the GLAM sector in the Pacific to be able to have an online presence for them, um, but also so that their culture is also accessible and also resilient. Um, and we also will continue, continue to engage with communities and share digital collections because if we don't share and allow these stories to be told, who are we pursuing? So yeah, that's me. Cool. Stop sharing. Thank you, Tapatu. That's really interesting and fascinating to hear that you're deciding about where it's going to be based. Do you know when that is going to happen, when that decision is going to be made? Um, possibly before our funding ends next year in June. So we're still in conversations. And so we've been working with Pacific Community, or also known as SBC. So they have branches in each of the Pacific Islands. So that could be a likely place to um, have this project. But yeah, like I said, with staff, like the resources in the Pacific is pretty limited and we need to work them up to have the right resources to take on this project. Yeah. We, we've got a few more minutes to talk to you um, about if, if, if other people did want to ask some questions. Um, I was just interested in that you were talking about the low res and, and keeping things usable on digital devices. Are you accepting all kinds of media? accepting video and audio as well? Yeah, so on our website, um, most of our Pacific communities have been using platforms that are free and easy for them to use. Um, so like YouTube is another way that we can harvest and share their collections. Um, another one is Ormeka. So I'll oh, just shout out to Solomon Islands National Museum. So they've recently launched their website um, and have been digitizing their collections through their phones. Um, and this has been a way that they can actually share their collections online. Um, and they're using a platform called Ormica, which is fairly cheap for them to afford. Um, and they've been able to do it themselves. So, so grateful for the British High Commission and Solomons, but also Tim Kong, uh, my manager, they helped them develop this website. So they can share their collections online. Um, at the moment, there's not many Pacific institutions that have a website and can share their collections. So they're kind of paving the way for other smaller institutions to do the same. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Does anyone have any other questions that they'd like to ask Taputu before we move on? Well, thank you very much and thank you for, for your speech and it was really interesting to hear about it. <laughs>